German tribes throughout Roman history came in an eclectic mix of sizes and colours, with these tribes causing Rome great turmoil during the Roman Republic period, with the migrations of tribes like the Cimbri, Teutons and Ambrones bringing carnage to the gates of Rome. This continued long after the fall of the Republic and into the Empire period, with such a wide and impressive array of tribes spanning centuries having different languages, customs and ways of life, a tribe would need to display a unique greatness, displaying its cultural crowns and feathers to garner its own chapter in the histories of the Roman Empire. Well that is certainly what this tribe did. With uncertain origins, believed to have arisen from within Scandinavia, like many of these later Germanic conquerors, they then found themselves on the edge of the Roman world in Central Europe, before battling westward across Germania to the Pyrenees in modern day Spain, establishing kingdoms in Hispania before being hounded out. They would then cross the Mediterranean, invading Africa and later even revisiting those Romans, looting the Eternal City for 14 days and exacting their revenge, even earning the scornful name from which we know them today, the Vandals. Hello guys, just quickly I would like to welcome you to the channel and tell you that if you have an interest in history and the tales surrounding those that came before us, do subscribe to the channel. My plan is to break down some of these great historical stories into digestible chunks with clear narrative characters and overviews, hopefully allowing the video to flow nicely and make the information easily retainable. I'm just a new channel dedicated to breaking down some of the lesser trodden paths for the other observers of the past like myself. So I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. Story of Germanic tribes, their connections, overlaps and similarities is a complex subject filled with different gene studies and opinions from historians about migrations and origins of societies. These subjects are still less understood than we would like. I'm going to attempt to cut through lots of these complications by telling this incredible story through some distinct cultural groups and three consecutive Vandal kings. To start with, I would like to outline two general themes that occur throughout much of Roman history and set us on our course with this great tale. Those themes are the consistent waves of invaders that wash over the Roman Empire, quite often newer iterations emerging from the lands to the east, in the Caucasus and steppe regions beyond. The other theme, if we would like to call it that, is how the Roman Empire settles these new neighbours. By the period we find ourselves looking at today, the Western Roman Empire is less than a century from total collapse, its forces are depleted and its power a far cry from the might it once exerted across the Mediterranean and beyond. Now in this period at the start of the 5th century AD, Rome's military relies to a large extent on what it would have considered barbarians. These groups were quite often separate from Romans, different languages, cultures and not citizens of Rome, but made up a larger and larger proportion of the army, the closer to the empire's collapse you reach in 476 AD. These people were known to the Romans as federate, allies who had obligations to provide Rome with military assistance in exchange for lands and benefits, but none of the perks of being a Roman colony or citizen. Although in the later empire, the perks had become lesser and the distinction between some of these groups was much less pronounced than it once was. It is in this cycle of migrating tribes, encountering those people already allocated Roman land and willing to die to protect it, that we now join the story. Now to set the story, the year is 406 AD, and just four decades earlier, the Huns defeated the Goths on the Pontic Caspian steppe, securing themselves atop the podium as the dominant force of the region north of the Black Sea and in the Caucasus. They would quickly continue their push west, this in turn led to recently settled Goths pushing further westward themselves and settling on the border of the Danube. It is believed it is this pressure that led to the Vandals and their companions pushing westward themselves, continuing these waves of migration trying to escape the ever ravenous steppe tribes of the east. To do this they would have to move across what was one of the more clear defining lines of the Roman provinces within Germania, the Rhine River. Now I'd like to take a moment to apologise for how badly I'm going to butcher some of these Germanic names. I really do hope you can forgive me for that. The first Vandal king we're going to encounter, however, is Godeskill. There are many variations of how to pronounce all of these Vandal kings' names, 
Godeskill organized a coalition of tribes in the region of Pannonia, intersecting with segments of many modern-day countries, including Poland, Hungary, Slovakia, Austria, Slovenia, and Serbia. These groups were the Hatsingi Vandals, the tribe Godeskill was king of, the Selingi Vandals, a northern branch of this tribe, also the Swabi people, and a tribe with origins in the Caucasus, the Alani, who had already been forced out of their lands in the previous generations, first in the Caucasus by the Huns, and then by migrating Goths. The Alani are an example that highlight the complications within clearly segmenting these groups. For example, we will speak of these Alani that accompany the Vandals on their great quest around Europe, but there are other portions of the identifiable Alani culture and tribe from their roots in the Caucasus and around Iran that are fighting alongside Visigoths, Ostrogoths, and even the Huns. These groups often mixed and mingled, making clear identifications sometimes more difficult. But together, this united force of many tribes, under the king of the Hatsingi Vandals, Godeskul, pushed west. They encountered the Franks, that society that would go on to dominate the region in a few centuries. These Franks were a previous generation of a migrating tribe looking for safety and lands to settle. They fought on behalf of the Romans as Federate and were allied with them to defend these borders. Godeskul won a great battle on the Rhine against these Franks, breaking the protective barrier and marking a key point in the Roman decline. The inability to protect Roman territories and those who occupy them was a key symbolic loss and an indicator of the control they never managed to regain. The outcome was one that was necessary for this coalition of tribes, although it did cost the Vandal king Godeskul his life, dying in what was a fierce battle, requiring the Allen tribe to divert from their hasty crossing of the river to swing the fate in the favour of their Vandal allies. Godeskul, despite his early death in the story, is the one king that made this great tale possible, a man not to be forgotten. The Germanic coalition ravaged the Rhine border region and moved into what is now southern Germany and northern and eastern France. They sacked and pillaged ten major cities, including Strasbourg, Mainz and Reims. They caused absolute carnage across the region before heading south. And two years after crossing the Rhine, they now crossed the Pyrenees mountain range into Spain in the year 409 AD, marking an incredible migration across the continent. At this point, with the Romans left little other choice, the Vandals, Alani and Swaby were loosely considered Federate, those tribes mentioned earlier that were incorporated into the empire in exchange for stability and military support. The tribes were granted lands in the Kingdom of Hispania, modern-day Spain and Portugal. The tribes were given lands by the Romans strategically separated from each other. This is an important part of how the Romans deal with these settling tribes. As mentioned earlier, these waves of migration were consistent and the Romans had a large amount of experience in settling them and pitting them against each other. To divide and conquer was a tool in the Roman arsenal that was well understood and well honed. The Hastingi received lands in Asturia to the northwest. The Selingi Vandals received lands in Beatka in the south of Spain. The Alani took lands in Lusitania to the west and areas surrounding Carthago Nova in the south. It is disputed if at this point they were full-fledged federate or simply invaders, with the Romans left little choice but to capitulate, for the time being at least. Keeping with the theme though, we move to the second of our Vandal kings. Ganderic, son of Godeskul, ruled the Hatsingi in the northwest and shared areas of territory with the Swabi. This led to tensions, and in 419 AD, the Battle of the Novosos Mountains took place. The exact details are murky, but based on the location, it is thought that the Swabi were the aggressors. The leading theory based on the accounts is that the Swabi were seeking a more permanent and secure position within Hispania, and they made a deal with the Western Roman Emperor Honorius to grant them officially recognised Federate status and fully ally with them. The Vandals, however, got the better of the Swabi and surrounded their king and army through better positioning and use of terrain. A Roman army arrived to help their new ally and broke the siege, causing Ganderic and his Hastingi Vandals to flee. What they didn't know was that the relieving army was just one part of a larger pincer movement, the second arm smashing the Vandals as they retreated and wiping out a large number of their force. This major loss at the hands of a Germanic Roman coalition 
again demonstrates this ever-flowing story of migrations and manipulations within the Empire. Now just two years before this Hatsingi defeat, the Selingi Vandals and the Alani to the south and southwest of Hispania also suffered an ill fate. The Visigoths had sacked Rome in 410, just one year after the Vandals had crossed the Pyrenees. The Goths had also crossed into modern-day Germany and France on the Vandal Trail. After the Eternal City was sacked for the first time in over half a millennium, it was another indicator of Western decline. Even if Rome was no longer the capital of the Western Roman Empire, with Ravenna claiming that title shortly before the sacking of Rome, Alaric the Visigoth King died shortly after the sacking, and the Emperor made deals with the subsequent Visigoth kings to give them lands in exchange for protection and service. The latest of these Visigothic kings was King Walha, who took control of a region in southern France. His capital was based in modern-day Toulouse. To prove his loyalty and good intentions towards his new holdings and the Romans, Walha was instructed to cross into Hispania and rid the Romans of their new Vandal pest. He wasted no time, travelling to southern Spain and decimating the Savingi Vandal tribe in the year 417. He then moved westward to where the Alani were, finding them in both of their strongholds and killing them, taking their king out in combat in 418 AD. With the southern tribes of this Vandal alliance now scattered, and then a year later the Romans and Swaby catching Ganderic the Vandal king in that deadly pincer movement, the coalition looked like it was set to come to an end almost as quickly as it had begun. Ganderic, on the other hand, had other plans. Knowing of the losses his allies took to the south, and now forced from his kingdom to the north, Ganderic also migrated down towards the coast. He rallied the scattered Selingi and unified the two Vandal tribes. Had Singi and Selingi became unified Vandals. At the same time, after the Alani's crushing defeat to the Visigoths, they named Ganderic their king and flocked to his side. Ganderic now had the future of these tribes' fates fully in his hands. Ganderic the new king headed to the south and started ravaging the regions of Baetica, the most southern tip of Spain, including Gibraltar. The Romans and their allies were not done with this Vandal incursion, however, and sought to eliminate this new wave of settlers completely. Just two years after these major defeats at the hands of the Romans and their allies, Ganderic was offered his first true test as king of a unified people. A Roman Gothic and Swaby army met the Vandals in the year 422 AD at the Battle of Tarico and was decisively destroyed by Ganderic, with the Goths said to have deserted their Roman commanders and later joined Ganderic in his new kingdom, leaving the Vandals to create a strong foothold in Hispania. Ganderic would dominate the region, growing his power and his tribe's wealth. They sacked Cartagena and Seville, claiming such an important coastal city as Cartagena gave them a large base for naval activity. They then ravaged the coast of North Africa and savaged the Balearic Islands in the Mediterranean. In the year 428, King Ganderic died while on siege and his half-brother Gaiseric claimed the throne. Much like his kin before him, Gaiseric had ambitions for his people. Just a year after becoming king, he gathered his tribe with a population of up to 80,000, although that number is very much contested, they used their now large naval fleet to cross the Mediterranean into Africa, a wildly ambitious and visionary move, one that could have spelled the end of this burgeoning Germanic people, now crossing at Gibraltar and entering another continent and a new world. Other than the pressure from the Romans and the other Hispanic tribes, the Vandals are thought to have maybe gone over to North Africa because they were invited by a disgruntled Roman governor, hoping to use these tribes as a tool to carve out his own kingdom. Whether true or not, Gaiseric had different plans, smashing every force he encountered and having his fleet off the coast of North Africa as he moved across modern-day Morocco and northern Algeria, ravaging the coastline and supplying the army as they went. Gaiseric captured the city of Hippo Regius, making it the Vandal capital in the year 431 AD. Within four years, the Roman Emperor Valentinian III had recognised Gaiseric as king of the lands he had conquered, including retention of the Roman territories of Mauritania and part of Numidia. Within four years though, and knowing the weakness of Rome, Gaiseric broke his word. 
He could see his empire growing on the horizon and he raided Carthage four years after his agreement with Valentinian and made the large and defended naval city his capital in the year 439, also capturing a large number of Roman vessels docked within the harbour. This plan to take Carthage may have been Gaiseric's plan before he ever even crossed into Africa. Gaiseric now presided over a large and wealthy kingdom, a large grain producer, and safe from the Hunnic incursions the rest of the empire was beset with. By the year 442 AD, three years after seizing Carthage, Gaiseric and his kingdom was acknowledged as the first barbarian kingdom, officially recognised as an independent Roman territory, instead of just a federate. Over the next few years, Gaiseric and the Vandals secured the Belleric Islands, Sardinia, Corsica and Malta as part of their kingdom. In the year 455, the Roman Emperor Valentinian III is murdered and Petronius Maximus takes the throne. Now, Gaiseric's son was set to marry Valentinian's daughter at one point, but with this coup, Petronius wed her to his own son to try and secure his position. He also took Valentinian's wife as his own. Gaiseric, being the cunning man he was, used this coup and loss of his future daughter-in-law as a casus belli, a legal justification for war and to break his pacts and truces made with Valentinian. That same year, Gaiseric and his fleet left Carthage and arrived in Italy, sacking the city in an even more ravenous manner than that of Alaric and the Goths had half a century earlier. The Vandals looted and pillaged for a full two weeks. It is theorised the bloodshed was not as bad as might be imagined because Pope Leo I begged Gaiseric to not destroy the ancient city, and so the gates were thrown open, and no siege was necessary. The city was, however, stripped bare, and although large-scale slaughter is not thought to have taken place, lots of ships did arrive back in North Africa with Roman slaves. Gaiseric dominated the Western Mediterranean for the remainder of his life, being the target of some huge Roman campaigns to rid the region of the Vandal threat and the embarrassment that Gaiseric caused the empire. He always emerged on top. In 468, he even destroyed two fleets, one from the Eastern and one from the Western Roman Empire, one of the largest naval incursions in history up to this point. The Battle of Cap Bon was a disaster for the Romans, and through the use of fire ships, the Vandal Empire sailed on. The Romans had committed over 1,000 ships and 50,000 men to this planned invasion to finally displace the Vandals and regain their control of parts of the Roman province of Africa. This battle is often used to indicate the loss of all chances of survival for Rome, unable to secure armies powerful enough to maintain control across their empire. Gaiseric would rule from the Strait of Gibraltar to the region of Tripoli, before his death signing a peace deal with Byzantium that lasted until Justinian's conquests over half a century later. Gaiseric's reign signified the high watermark for Vandal society. After his death, the empire slowly lost influence and control. Barbers encroached from the south, causing major losses, and the spread of the Eastern Roman Empire eventually swallowed the Vandals. From the year 406 AD, with Godeskul crossing the Rhine, so less than 15 years later, his son Ganderic becoming king of a unified Vandal and Alani people and smashing their Roman Gothic pursuers. To in 429 AD, the great Gaiseric crossing continents to immortalize his people as one of the chief sets of protagonists in the fall of the Romans. All this was done within 25 years, crossing Europe, Germania, the Pyrenees and the Mediterranean. It does not even sound possible a Germanic people from landlocked Central Europe waging war through naval dominance and having their capital in Africa. The most fascinating and unlikely story. Three kings, 30 years, and the subsequent collapse of Rome. The Vandals and their kings, with pain, blood and ambition, stitched themselves well into the great tapestry of history. <laughs>